In this video, I'm gonna show you my top five tips when designing a great dashboard. We're gonna go through some of my personal favorites and also why we do them in the first place. All of that and more, so without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So Power BI provides you with a lot of features to play around with when it comes to building your reports and it's easier to get lost when it comes to adding features and elements in your reports. So adding charts, graphs, or different slices to your data. And while this is great, it's ultimately just a tool to present information. What you need to bear in mind is that dashboards don't only just have to look good, but they also need to be functional. They need to serve a purpose. So the tips that I'm gonna go through here applies to different kinds of reports that you uh, may build. I certainly keep them in mind when I start designing or creating dashboards from scratch. Also, these tips aren't just related to Power BI, but more general design. So uh, you can apply these tips to other reporting tools like Tableau, ClickSense, um, and it will have the exact same results. The first tip is to consider answering the questions first. So if you're starting from a blank canvas, think about the type of questions that you want your report to answer. Maybe you want to show the growth of your sales over time, or you want to know which department is selling the most. So these questions may come as a form of requirement from your clients. Maybe these are the questions they want answered with these reports, or they could come as recommendations from you, showing them what could be uh, taken or what insights could be extracted from this data that you have. So the first step here would be to list out all the questions that you want answered. And once you've listed them all out, then think about the design and layout of your reports, making sure that these questions are answered with your dashboard. This ensures that your dashboard or reports are at the very least functional and it answers the business questions that it needs to answer. The second tip that I want to give you is to add context. Now, let me show you this visual. And this is a tile that I took from an online Power BI dashboard. And when you look at this visual, what does it tell you? If you knew the significance of this data, and maybe you know this report already, sure. But to anyone else, it looks just like any other number. Adding context to your data allows your users to understand if that number is good or bad. So when you display data like this, think about answering the so what to add context. Maybe in this case, you want to show how much your volume has changed since last year, or maybe you want uh, to show the volume compared to annual benchmarks. Maybe you want to compare it against your target volume for this year. Adding these kind of elements give your users a better understanding of the significance of the number that you're showing uh, on your reports. And if you want to see a good example of how to add a context to cards, let's say comparing values against previous month, I have a video uh, covering exactly this. So check it out if you haven't yet. The third tip that I can give you is try to tell a narrative or a story. Power BI is great at making reports self-service. So pretty much like a buffet restaurant, uh, all the data and information is laid out to you on a single table and it's up to the users to pick and choose what they want uh, and come up with their own conclusions with the report. Now, while this is a great idea, organizing your information in a cohesive way uh, allows you to better communicate your insights to your users and influence them into making decisions. Here's an example of a report that does a good job at telling a story. Now I'm probably biased because I built this dashboard, but we'll use it as an example in this case. So this is a headcount analytics report that gives basic information about the company's HR uh, headcount. So we give context on numbers like uh, the headcount number as well as how it's changing versus last month. Then it gives charts that could be used to explain how and why the headcount is changing. So uh, narratives on the average age of the workforce, the length of service, 
as well as how it's changed over time. Now telling stories with your reports is a great concept and there are lots of ways to approach it. However, if you want to get daily dose of tips when it comes to storytelling uh, data in Power BI or just reports in general, um, you should totally follow the storytelling with data on LinkedIn. I'll leave a link in the description box below. And basically they give amazing tips on how to tell better stories with visuals almost regularly. The fourth tip is to highlight your most important information. So pay attention to the questions that you get from your clients. For example, if they have a burning question that they want answered all the time straight away with your reports, make sure that you highlight those information first. So for example, if your clients need just the overall headcount for your organization, now while you can use this chart on the left hand side here, which gives you the breakdown of your headcount by employment type, and it totally answers the question, but the user still has to uh, add up all of these numbers in order to arrive to the same value. So instead of having it as a chart, we use a card instead, make it bold, put it on the top. That way when they check the report, the first thing that they, they see is what they actually want to see. Also a quick tip from here is that users typically read documents from top to bottom. So if you're gonna format your report, start with the most important information on the top then insights and explanations in the middle, then details at the bottom of your report. So the last tip that I can give you is remove clutter. Now, this last tip is pretty important, especially if you're using Power BI, just because it makes it easy for you to add and pack a lot of visuals into one page to make it look pretty. Now imagine this, for you, a Power BI veteran, a page might look insightful and has a lot of options for you to choose from, but it may get confusing for users and clients depending on their proficiency with using Power BI. Also having too many visuals in one page can convolute the story you're trying to tell, which goes against our point number three. So minimize the number of visuals in each of the dashboards if possible. Uh, focus on a story or answering a question and then structure your dashboard around that. So if you think it's too many visuals in one page, split it into two pages. Uh, they're there for a reason. I typically tend to keep my charts and graphs around five to seven per page. Uh, this excludes any call out cards or filters in the page. This just ensures that the reports aren't too cluttered and the range and the ratio of your charts are obviously personal preference. And that's really it for this video. I hope these tips will help you design and create more insightful and functional dashboards uh, in the future. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't, so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access demo files and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.